Join us now for Health for Life, brought to you by Hamilton Healthcare System. Today, we're talking with Dr. Ashish Kabir of Hamilton Physician Group in Dalton. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Kabir. Excited to be here. It is great to see you again. How have you been doing, man? I'm great. Uh, you know, very exciting things happening at Hamilton. So, you know, glad to be a part of it. Uh, the practice is growing and just able to help the people around Dalton. That's great. Dr. Kabir is a neurologist at Hamilton Physician Group Neurology. He and Dr. Juan Gonzalez diagnose, treat, and manage issues related to the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and muscles. They specialize in the care and treatment of Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, seizure disorders, migraines, carpal tunnel syndrome, and strokes. Today, Dr. Kabir will be talking with us about memory issues. Dr. Kabir, why is it important to assess memory issues? So memory issues are a very common problem that neurologists see in clinic, uh, and it's a very common problem in the population. Cognitive impairment, memory issues, um, they have a variety of possible causes, and it's important to identify them so that we can try and improve the quality of life and care for a very large portion of the patient population. So these causes include medication side effects, metabolic issues, delirium, depression, dementia. So some of these things like medication side effects and depression, they can be reversed. And others, well, um, they're more complicated. So these are what we call the neurodegenerative syndromes or the dementias um, is how they're commonly called. But the symptoms can be treated for a long period of time, and uh, the changes in quality of life with proper treatment can be massive, um, especially in patients as uh, they enter that retirement and older ages nowadays. Are there benefits to being screened early in the process? Yes. Um, if the screening is negative, uh, concerns may be alleviated, at least at that point in time. But if the screening is positive and further evaluation is warranted, uh, the patient and the physician can uh, identify the cause of the impairment. So whether it's reversible or not, as we were saying, if it's not, then we can properly identify the dementia syndrome and then either treat the underlying disease or health condition, manage the comorbid conditions more effectively, avert potential safety issues, allow the person to create or update uh, advanced directives and plan long-term care, ensure the person has support services and a care network, uh, and help with medical, legal, financial concerns, we can work with the patient and their caregivers to develop strategies to improve quality of life and manage lifestyle, safety modifications, uh, emotions associated with their diagnosis, use uh, the services of behavioral health uh, to try to uh, facilitate any concerns from that perspective and ensure that the caregiver receives appropriate information, referrals, and support. And what's uh, becoming more and more interesting and important these days, as we'll talk about, um, encourage participation in clinical research because as uh, I'll hope to be able to talk about today a little bit. Uh, we really are an exciting time in uh, clinical research when it comes to the treatment of these um, up to now um, untreatable conditions. And hopefully be able to reverse some of these. That's right. Now, how are memory issues evaluated? How do you evaluate that? Yeah, so a clinic visit will usually include an interview to assess uh, memory, behavior, mood, functional status, especially with complex tasks. Um, you know, typically what we do is we get the patient alone so that family members or companions can't prompt the person, and then we'll do a memory test uh, while also evaluating the person's behavior um, and actions and, and overall just appearance. We may have patients who are only mildly impaired, and these patients uh, may be adept at covering up their deficits um, and somewhat reluctant to address the problem, honestly. But um, in some cases, you know, the patients might not have insight into how much difficulty they're having. Uh, and it's really family members that uh, that help sort of point out the deficits that they've been seeing. Um, of course, uh, per HIPAA re regulations, the patient uh, should give permission in advance or invite the family member to come with them, but also allow space to allow for the full uh, evaluation. 
Once the initial interview is done, there is a variety of additional testing that typically needs to be done, such as identifying those reversible causes that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. as well as genetic testing, imaging, biomarker testing, lumbar punctures, all sorts of uh, tests such as MRIs, EEGs that we typically do to try to classify exactly what disease we're dealing with. Well, let's talk a little bit about Alzheimer's disease. What are the early signs of this disease? Right. So Alzheimer's is what comes up always, and I've had this question come up a lot where people ask, what's the difference between uh, dementia and Alzheimer's? And um, what it is essentially is that Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. It is a disease that is neurodegenerative, which mm -hmm. means that the brain degenerates, you know, worsens as time passes, and it's a type of dementia. What you get is memory problems, um, difficulty with tasks, etc. So dementia itself, it's a loss of thinking, remembering, reasoning skills, um, and Alzheimer's disease is by far the most common type of dementia. Now, is that sometimes reversible or no? Right. So I want to talk about some of the options that have become uh, available. Reversible is a strong word, um, but mm -hmm. um, the treatment landscape for all the dementias actually are changing dramatically. Uh, and uh, really, clinical research and scientific discoveries have uh, made what even 10 years ago would have otherwise been considered impossible um, well, well within our grasp. I'm not sure we're quite there yet with everything, but we're almost. And it's very, very, very important to try to identify these diseases early nowadays. So clinical research is something that really makes a difference a lot of the time. A lot of the time. We're very, very lucky to be living in a time where, you know, my uh, neurologists in the past could have only really dreamed of these days. Um, and it's such a large segment of the population that we're treating that uh, it really does have very tangible effects in um, the day-to-day -day lives of many of our family and friends. Well, now tell me about MCI. What is MCI? So um, we used to classify um, these diseases more in the past based on um, what the patient looked like as opposed to what the underlying disease process is. Mm -hmm. Mild cognitive impairment, or MCI, is what it is, is it's, it's a condition that uh, may progress to moderate and severe cognitive impairment and often is an early sign of Alzheimer's disease. Now, what are some of the stages that Alzheimer's disease, so, you, that you find that? Right. So we, we classify Alzheimer's into mild, moderate, and severe. During the preclinical stages, you might not really have any symptoms, but um, there are changes that are taking place in the brain. Um, and as time passes, the patient starts noticing deficits or exhibiting deficits. In the early stages, you know, you might notice a little memory impairment, that sort of thing. But as we move to moderate or severe stages, we start noticing difficulties with day-to-day -day tasks, um, initially more complex tasks, but this can progress to things like financial issues and then onwards to feeding, bathing, etc. Yeah, what about recognition of family and friends? Is that sometimes a, a symptom? That's very common in Alzheimer's disease, actually, uh, especially uh, mild to moderate uh, stages. We see a lot of difficulty with remembering sometimes um, people's names and things like that. And this can be very um, difficult for patients. I could imagine. Otherwise. Yes. It would so be hard. embarrassing for a lot. Right. And weight loss? Is weight loss a symptom? So weight loss um, is associated with forgetting to eat properly properly is often very common in these patients as well. Yeah, you start uh, noticing that you've paid a bill twice that you would otherwise never have done. Things like that become an issue. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Now, what are some of the causes of Alzheimer's disease? So um, that is honestly some of the, the biggest questions that are still completely eluding us. Early onset Alzheimer's, there might be a genetic component. Late onset, um, which is typically after a person's uh, mid-60 age group. So there's a complex series of changes that have probably been going on for some time. Um, genetic reasons, environmental causes, lifestyle factors all contribute. Well, now, when you talk about genetic reasons, you're saying that maybe it is hereditary? There are um, certain types of Alzheimer's disease, we feel, that uh, uh, may be more hereditary than others. So mutations, changes in genes can cause this. Um, sometimes these are passed down, but not always. Uh, um, Alzheimer's is very, very common. And as I say, there's a lot of different causes. So genetics alone is not something we really focus on unless if there is a very strong family history. Yeah, I see. Now, Dr. Kabir, uh, when you treat patients with Alzheimer's disease, can you tell us what treatments are available to the patient? Right. So for many years, there were two um, FDA-approved treatments. These are medicines that essentially slow down the progression a little bit and make the symptoms a little more tolerable. But there are lots of new treatments that are 
just that have just arrived or are right on the horizon. Dr. Kabir, thank you for sharing all this great information. If you could leave our listeners with a word of advice, what would that be? I think that, you know, when it pertains to memory impairment, I think it's really important to be evaluated by a neurologist uh, for these um, issues. I think there's a lot of people who are embarrassed and um, a little confused about whether or not they should treat care, thinking, is there anything that can even be done? But you'd be amazed at how much reversible etiologies there are for uh, these kinds of symptoms. Memory is a compilation of everything that happens to us. So all the other things I talked about are very, very important to treat. Um, The metabolic problems, any underlying diseases, and um, any drugs that might be contributing. So there's probably a lot that your doctor can help with uh, that might make your life a lot better. So come and see us, and we'll see what we can do to help. Thank you, Dr. Kabir. For more information or an appointment at Hamilton Physician Group Neurology, call 706-275-6121 or visit hamiltonhealth.com slash neurology. This program in no way seeks to diagnose or treat illness or to replace professional medical care. Please see your health care provider if you have a health problem. Thank you for listening to Health for Life, a presentation of Hamilton Healthcare System. 